And to put this into context, gents, seven of the top ten are now out of the competition. Nine of the top 16 are out. This is almost statistically impossible. Well, yeah, it, it does happen. Not, not very often. You, you, you're dead right there, Rads. Um, yeah, they, they just, you know, that, that Dominic mentioned it in commentary, and I, I kind of hinted a little at the top of the, the programme today. There's, there is some kind of tipping point in the air, it feels to me, like the mid to low Matt Selt's not a lower ranked guy he's you know he's a real real good player but the guys not in the top 60 not featuring deep in tournaments all that often are super dangerous Dominic called it as I say you drop a couple of percent high 80s percent pot success today Judd miss too many balls and when you do that you're leaving yourself open you become susceptible to that kind of defeat and, and Matt Sell earned it because he, he was a little bit shaky in spots but he gathered himself steeled himself which you've got to do towards the end of the match and he finished it beautifully yeah he seemed to really gather himself specifically after the mid-session of all Jimmy he came out like a new man he did he, you know it's two each Judd Trump as we said in the end for he's be kicking himself not to be three one up he let Matt Sell up to it, he come out like fresh start. You know, it's then it's then only a best of seven. You know, and anyone can win a best of seven. A bit more difficult, best of eleven, best of nine. But when it was two each, come out fresh and played the better snooker of the two of them. And there was a couple of things in there as well with Judd Trump when he got that snooker the game before last. Looked like he was going to steal it. Part of the fantastic green, perfect position on the brown, bad positional shot on the blue, didn't get on the pink. Matt ended up winning that on the black. And the last frame saw his opportunity and went through the door, which is not often done. So he'll be delighted with his form and obviously fancied a job. Well, for a moment, we've got to celebrate that fantastic pot in the eighth frame. It was 4-3 to sell. Trump was very much against the cosh. He was snookered. Well, he wasn't quite snookered. He was positioned tough, and then this happened. Yeah, just a, an unbelievable pot. And, and as we said at the time but amongst ourselves were saying sometimes you can almost play too good a safety shot Dominic mentioned it in commentary said I wonder if Alan's in there thinking any out shots here but I couldn't see one <laughs> Judd was the only guy that could and it went but this was his Achilles heel today he, he, normally that type of shot even although it wasn't dead straight he normally knocks it in Three. this is more his type of shot but he didn't get on the black as we'll see and he paid the price for it. it Matt, Matt Sell, worth seeing again. I mean, that, that is just pure talent. Matt's played a brilliant safety shot prior to that. Then Judd makes a safety error. He, he's trying to push the black more towards the middle pocket like Hossein did the other night and then get it safe or maybe fluke it. Matt Sell had to steal himself here because this is missable, Jim. Yeah, and he obviously is off. Like uh, Mark Selby did against the same, running off in the middle pockets mm -hmm. in the shot. But, you know, that was a big relief for Matt Selp to win that frame because the other guy needed a snooker, looked like he'd thrown it away, and then got himself together, went out, like, to the washroom, probably washed his hands and face, said, like, come on, let's go again. You know, I've, I'm still... I'm well in front, 5-3 up, and made a total clearance in the last frame. Good for him. And let's remind ourselves of that because it was a truly class way to round out this match, just to really say, I'm here and I've come here to deliver the goods. Yes, he came to the table, there wasn't all that much on. It was a squeak of a chance, but he, he grasped the moment. You know, he got low in the black, which I don't think he deliberately did, but when you're faced with the winning moment, you've got to steady yourself, make yourself brave, and prepare yourself for the prospect of beating, you know, pretty much the best player in the world, and he did it with class. And to, the way that he did it, he can now carry that with him, because... Four again, mid to lower ranked players. They don't win matches like that in, of, in that nature towards the end all that often on the biggest stage. So when you do that, just looking at the stats there, it, 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 he'll take so much from it. And when he goes in and plays Barry Hawkins, it's quite a nice match, I think, for, for Matt Sell. Actually, for both of them. We'll both, both fancy the job. But, uh, yeah, looking at that... He deserved the win. There's the pot success. Judd dropping below what would be par for him about 93, 94. And he paid the price. Jimmy, how often do you see Judd Trump over nine frames, a highest break of just 68? A good spot. I was just going to mention that. You know, that is, you know, that is well below stand for him. You know, and he, he did miss a few shots and a few easy pots. Didn't score very heavily. But a lot of that was to do with Matt Set. Matt Selt's quality safety play, you know, didn't really let him get going. In yeah. Sorry, Jim. Yeah. 
No, sorry, I was going to say, Raji, the, the 68 was in frame one, wasn't it? And after that, his highest break was 44, which was in frame three. So judges could not put anything sustained scoring together today. And that, for me, is the key word, sustained, because in mm. spots, Trump was exceptional. Mm -hmm. But there were just these errors that you're just not used to seeing him do. No, they've, they've gone from his game and they come back today. A lot of unforced errors. You know, that easy, ready, missed at two and up in the balls. You know, they sort of sense, you know, this is a chance to press on and these top players take it. He didn't today. And I think that carried on after the interval. He missed ball after ball, but he can't take anything away from Matt Sell. He kept applying the pressure and stepping all over his mistakes. You know, a worthy winner, it has to be said. I think a worthy winner. I have to say, Trump for me reminds me of Man United in the 90s. <laughs> You're waiting. They might be 3-0 down and you're thinking, it's going to be 4-3. And you were kind of waiting for that here. I, th I thought it was a bit of noise. I thought that might have been Celt arriving for our interview. It obviously isn't. But yet you were almost waiting for something to happen, which never quite came. No, it didn't. And, and I'll tell you who else would have been waiting on Judd catching, you know, a, a, a groove today would have been Matt Selt because he watches the champion of champions. He watches all the, the, the big events that Judd's had success in the last few years. So he knows what's probably in the offing and, and about to happen, but it didn't. And Matt, this is why I said at the interval, you've got to try and get in your own bubble, try and find a way of trying to negate the situation and the atmosphere and all that's going on out there and just simplify it by, right, here's my shot, I'm going to go to the table, I'm going to stay in my method, do my thing. It's easy for me to stand here and say that. To pull it off out there is, is, is extremely difficult, you know. Jim, how big is this win for Matt Sell? Because in the context, not just of a ranking tournament, but a triple crown event against the world number two, the reigning champion of champions. Yeah, uh, absolutely huge. But what he will probably tell you himself that it's been documented that when he does play on the TV table, he doesn't relax, you know, he is a bit jabby and he doesn't really get going and play in his game. Outside... On the, on the tables outside in the qualifying matches is a match for anyone. You know, he plays top draw stuff. So for him to perform like he did today on the number one table against the best player in the world who's just won the champion of champions, they give him an awful lot of confidence. You know, and he must fancy, you know, kicking on. He's got a tough match with Barry Hawkins. Barry Hawkins would rather be playing Matt Selt than Judd Trump. You know, so there's the other side of the coin to look at as well. Matthew's also off the table. He's very gregarious. He's outgoing. But... It, when you play snooker, it's different. You, you can go into your shell. You know, when you walk in the players' room, Jimmy will tell you, you walk in, you, you hear Celty before you get in the door. So, but when you go out there, it's different. You know, you can become a bit inhibited, inhibited and, and just, you know, you just don't feel confident in, in your body language and everything. And maybe he's a bit insecure. You just don't know, you know. We, we've all got insecurities in life and in snooker and, and perhaps, you know, maybe we can find that out, out if, if we get a chance to speak to Matt, you know. And we will be speaking to him very shortly. That's ultimately what we're waiting to do. But just to put this again into further context, this season, by the way, Matt Salt has not progressed past the last 128. And here he is in the last 16. And so that makes it official now. Matt Sell will be facing Barry Hawkins in round four. And then this is a, I mean, it's a, we said this is so wide open here because the winner of that will play the winner of Andy Hicks and then the culmination of what's looking like, I would have said, Mark Allen, until Dave Gilbert claws another frame back. What a match that is. Uh, yes, it is at the moment. Mark Allen's 41 to the good early on in, uh, in, in frame 10 there, but Dave Gilbert's got a chance of the counter-attack. And who, who's to say that's not going to go to the side? A word, actually, for Andy Hicks before uh, Matt comes in and joins us. He's won three deciders to get to that part of the draw. I had a little chat with Andy in, uh, in the press room the other day, and he's in good spirits. He, He's a good lad, Andy, good player, has been for a long, long time. And it's another story that adds to this UK. We've had a lot of them this week. And it's brilliant to see Andy Hicks up there challenging it. And we'll see, hopefully, him on the main table. Hi, I'm Ronnie O'Sullivan, and welcome to Eurosport Snooker on YouTube. Click here to subscribe to Eurosport Snooker.